Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all how I use three video editors together to go from this flat, harsh, <laughs> flat raw file from a Fujifilm X-Trans sensor, an X-T4, and I get to this final image right here. So why do I use three different editors? Well. I was only using two and I recently did an A-B test with several images from a couple of different X-Trans sensor cameras, all Fujifilm, obviously, and Capture One by far has the best sharpness, has the best color accuracy, has the best handling of noise, and also has the best handling of color noise, not just luminosity noise or brightness and shadows and harshness noise. So... This here is the, let me make sure everything is zeroed out. Boom, 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 and boom. So this is the true raw file as it comes out of the Fujifilm X-T4. I'm actually gonna edit two photos. I'm gonna do one all the way through and I'll do one more. The second one's gonna be a little bit simpler, but it's this one because I wanna show you guys how I brighten up wheels and, and stuff like that. But right now we're on this one right here. So the first thing I do is I will do my noise reduction. And with all my X-T4 files, I do luminance at 75, detail at 50, and color at 50. And while we're on this little refined section, I'll zoom in right here, and on the most extreme of color contrasts, or brightness and shadow contrast, really, you'll have some purple fringing right here. Even the best of lenses, when you're looking straight down the nose of an LED high beam, you're gonna get some kind of color fringing. And I'll go ahead and bump up my purple defringe. As you can see, is it off and on? It does help quite a bit. It doesn't alter anything except the fringing. It's an easy peasy one, two, three done. So I always do it to my images. Now, usually I would do my auto levels here, auto adjust my levels, but this thing is so harsh and contrasty. It's just, it's all it's gonna do is bring down, here I'll do it. All it's gonna do is bring down my shadows and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave that as is. And then on my highlights, I'm gonna go negative, let's do negative 25. And then on my shadows, I'm gonna bring them up 15, like that. So now that's all I do in Capture One. That is all I do. Now I'm going to export and I have a pre-made or I created a export recipe. It is a lossless TIFF file. So you're going to retain all the flexibility and editability of a raw image. Uh, it's actually going to be larger in size as far as, far as file size. Uncompressed 16-bit. So it is a lossless image. So it is going to be a TIFF file. 16-bit, uncompressed, and I shot in Adobe RGB because it's a wider color gamut, and so I export it as an Adobe RGB, an ARGB file. So I would export that as a TIFF, and then I would go to my next program, which is going to be Luminar Neo. Now, I also used to have, I still have it, I just don't use it. Goodness, there's the, it, there's the, oh, that's a little much there, huh? All right, so here is the TIFF. So anyway, I was using Luminar AI that came out with Luminar Neo. This is superior. It, it, it's just a better program. It's basically everything Luminar AI was turned up to 10. So we are now in Luminar Neo. I'm actually going to do this and revert that to the original. So here is the TIFF file that came out of Capture One. Now, I didn't actually save it in this video because I've already done this whole process before and I don't want to overwrite my original files. I'm doing what I did in the original anyway. But this is the TIFF file that came out of Capture One. And, and so now we're gonna do some editing on this one. In this program, And all three of these programs 
and all three of these programs do different things better than each other. So yes, you could just jump straight into Luminar Neo and pretty much do all this stuff or Capture One or Affinity. It's going to have different ways of getting this final image. But yes, you can do most of the stuff overlaps with each other. Okay. But every program does certain things better than the others. And I love to use Luminar for its automatic um, AI enhanced features. So I'll do my AI accent first. I'm probably going to do this around the 75, 65 mark. How's 65 look? That looks good. It's a little pushed, but that's okay. Let's bring it down to 60. Uh, my structure. So I want my structure to probably be 30. I love structure. It's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things that you can do to a car that actually looks natural. You do this to a person or a busy background or brick streets or most anything. If you push structure very hard, it's going to look weird. But because cars have all these curves and they're reflective and they got the highlights and the low lights, structure really pulls those details out. So there's off, there's on, there's off, there's on. You see the rest of the image looks over processed. It looks like someone is a first time editor and they're cranking up clarity or structure in this case on their images. So it looks really good on the car and kind of weird everywhere else. So we're going to go to masking and I'm actually going to use the AI mask. I just recently started doing this because they improved the functionality and the speed and the accuracy over the last two updates and I love it now. I'm going to select transport. As you can see, it's also grabbed this out of focus. I believe that's a Hyundai Tucson SUV in the background there. By the way, the car that we're doing is a 2023 uh, Genesis GV60 performance all-wheel drive. It's all electric, like sports jelly bean, I guess. It's a four-door hatchback subcompact crossover. Anyway, let's keep editing. So that looked good. I just need to go to my brush now, go to a race, and I'm going to actually remove that there. And I'm going to. And so now in my mask. So I'm just going to use the erase tool and take some of that off of the tires. I really don't want the tires brightened up or crispy. Uh, but I do want some of this brick streets. But I don't want it at the same level as the car. So I'm going to put it at about 50. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit right there in front of the car and then right down here, but not past it. And enhance it like that. And let's come back to our tools. I'm going to go to details. I love the medium details option. I'm going to go to 15, use my mask. I am going through this pretty quick, guys. It would take forever if I went too much slower because we've got a lot to do. But I'm going to take this. It, this is almost like... It is sharpening, but it's, but by choosing, so it's slightly increasing contrast and also sharpness, but only in medium sized items. So for instance, there's, it, there's what it looks like at hundred percent, right? So it's grabbing the, the cross hatching and the grill, the details and the reflections, the Genesis logo, the headlights, stuff like that, right? So there's off, there's on. Now that's obviously way overdone. Small details, it's going to really enhance the grain and the noise so I never use it and then large detail will it almost like smooths it out uh, sometimes I use it most of the time I don't uh, but I always use medium detail usually between 10 to 25 so I'm gonna put that on so there's off there's on small detail but it does give a little give a little bump of cleanness to the nose of the car. And last thing we're going to do in Luminar is our medium contrast. I on raw files probably 50% of the time medium contrast just works wonders because you're compressing all these highlights and lowlights into a nice flat image. And so this is kind of taking the midtones and pulling them apart. So I'd probably do this at like 30 something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks good. And so that's all I would do in Luminar Neo. The last program is going to be Affinity 
photo. Affinity photo is very much like Photoshop, except I don't have to pay a subscription. I just own it. And guess what? They still keep me up to date with all the updates. I've owned this for probably five years now, and I still get updates, and there's no stopping coming soon. I love programs like that. I'd rather pay more up front and own it forever and be able to put it across two or three machines, depending on how they license, and own it forever than have to pay what seems like a small fee, but if you really add it up, you're coming out of pocket thousands of dollars over the duration of just owning a small business for a couple of years. You know what you could, I'm getting on a rant here, but you, you know what you could do with a few thousand extra dollars instead of paying a subscription fee, the kind of gear that you could upgrade or the kind of classes that you could go to to actually push forward your business? <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry. I just hate subscription-based services. I feel like they're, at this point, they're predatory the way that everything's gotten Goodness, let's keep going. So this is now. Uh, so I would export out of Luminar Neo as a TIFF, just like we did last time. TIFF, actual full size, uh, should be Adobe RGB. At this point, you could probably go to sRGB. It doesn't matter. We're going to do Adobe RGB just to make sure everything's good and consistent, and we're not getting any different colors. We're also not reducing our gamut. Uh, no compression, 16-bit, 300 pixels per inch. Export that to a new TIFF file. And then, boom, here we are in Affinity Photo. Okay, so in Affinity Photo, we have some automatic tools up here at the top. So I'm going to go Auto Contrast. And then I'm going to go Auto Levels, Auto Colors. And this last one is usually not right. Auto, Yeah, Auto White Balance is way off way off I really only need about two points towards the warm maybe three yeah let's go three and now let's do our curves again guys I'm sorry I'm going so fast I just want this video to not be boring I guess I'm trying to show you guys what all I'm doing if y'all need to pause it rewatch it go back that's fine I'm gonna do another photo beginning to end right after this and I'm going to bring up my highlights on my curves. But then I'm going to grab the very tippy top and kind of pull it back down. Because I don't want it to just blow everything out right there. Let's get it back under control. And I would also use the dodge tool to sort of brighten up the nose of the car. But let's take a look at removing these. Oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. I'm going to fast forward, okay? But I'm going to pause or rather slow back down into real time and show you all the more important parts, right? So first, I would just use the in-painting brush and get rid of the lines and the lines and the lines and the lines. Holy crap. I would do one pass like this and try and hit as much as possible and then we're gonna have to go back and go back and do it and do it and do it and it's gonna take forever this is gonna take the longest by far so let's hit everything and make sure affinity knows what we don't want is any of this right here let's take a look it's probably gonna look like doo-doo butt cheeks but we gotta start somewhere Oh my gosh, my system is cooking. Oh man, that actually doesn't look like hot doo-doo trash. That's great. So now I'm going to stay with in painting brush and I'm going to come in here. And this is the part where I fast forward because I've got to go there and boom and boom and do it again and hit. So let's go ahead and slow this down because I want to show you guys the healing brush. The healing brush is like a combination of in painting and clone stamping. So up here in this nice blue, I'm just going to use that to sort of get rid of some of this weird, weird stuff. So I have opacity on 100, flow on 100, hard on 50. I don't like seeing those hard edges. 
I just want to sort of get rid of some of this weirdness we got going on here, especially, especially right here. Boom, 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 boom. Get rid of that. And guys, I would just keep on and keep on and keep on until this looks right, because this does not look right. I would keep going. I'd probably come in here, take some of that, move it around, and keep on going. Maybe make a beautiful little butterfly. Anyway, <laughs> so let's come down here. And I'm going to show you all how to get stuff away from close objects. Because if you use in painting, we're going to come over here and select somewhere. And I would paint this out like that. And I'd probably hit it a couple more times just to get me that weird color. Control zero. There you go. Now, again, I would go and go and go until this looks absolutely perfect. But there is that image. It is done. If this is where you guys are going to stop off and you're not going to watch the next video, if this is where you guys are going to stop, is it, if this is where any of you guys are going to stop watching and if this is the point, so I'm going to do another image, but if this is the point where any of y'all are going to hop off the video, I thank you guys so much for watching this far. Please subscribe to stay on top of any of my new stuff. Like this video if you liked it. Drop a comment down below if you want me to do something in the future or if you have a question about this video here today. Again, thank you all for watching this far, but I'm going to do one more image that is very different, very different lighting scenario, not nearly as much erasing and doing all that stuff just to show you guys how the different techniques and the different tools function depending on how the vehicle is lit. Alrighty, here we are back in at Capture One, and let's come down to this image right here. Let's make sure everything is reset, 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 so I can show you an original e fringe. Okay, so again, noise reduction 75, 50, and 50. D fringe, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. My levels. The auto levels, again, not a fan. Usually I am, but right now it's not working for me. High dynamic range, I think that's too much. So let's go 12 on the shadows and leave it like that. Now we're going to export as a TIFF, lossless, ARGB, 16-bit, uncompressed. And then we're going to jump into... Luminar Neo. I'm actually not even going to need to go into affinity to finish this one so let's do again enhance I'm gonna bring it up that's too much let's do 50 structure let's go 36 and I'm actually gonna hand paint this one on here bring my softness down and hand paint all this in because I don't want to get inside the wheel arch I don't want to see all that in there I just want to see let's go increase the softness I just want to see this right here this is what I want to draw the eye to done with that details again good lord that's too much let's do 20 again we're gonna mask it ourselves I want I'm looking right here and I'm gonna do the headlight and this piece right there the details, super contrast, I already know. Yeah, there we go. Let's do 26 on there. And then I can come up. I can go to develop. I'm going to do my curves in here this time. See, I, I don't even know where they're at. Click right there for my anchor. Drop my shadows. And a couple more adjustments I'm going to do is I'm going to bump my saturation and that's it i would export this one as a jpeg thank you guys so much for watching this video please like it if you liked it subscribe to stay on top of all my new stuff and y'all have a great day